Hello, I want to show you Kristen Brooks' iPad lab here at Woodstock Elementary School in Georgia. Uh, it's a really colorful, cool place. And uh, let's take a step inside. Welcome. <laughs> Hello. Hi. <laughs> so, oh, we have, we got one viewer now. When it's during the school day, it's hard to, <laughs> hard to get a lot of views, but, but I bet people will watch the, the replay. So you have a, a whole huge room in here that is your iPad lab. This is, well, the advantage of an iPad lab is that you can have students sit anywhere they want, yes, right? Yes, um, <laughs> laid back, we call it kind of the cafe kind of area. So it's laid back and we do projects and... An iPad pad. An iPad pad. That was actually one of the names considered for the room. Instead of the iPad lab, it was considered uh -huh. the iPad pad from Sandy Adams, your friend. Yes, Sandy. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, it kind of looks like maybe a kindergarten room, too, with the, with the bright colors. Yes, I wanted it to be very colorful because I actually color-coded where they sit on the carpet with the boxes up there for the storage, and then the iPads are actually colored to go with it. That is a great idea. So what happens in this room? In this room, the students come in, and I have the Prometheum board with using Air Server connected to my iPad. And I usually go over what we're going to do for the day while they sit on the carpet. Sometimes I have a video from PBS or Brain Pop that you know is a little launching pad for what we're going to do that day. And then um, show them a quick demonstration. And we usually make some sort of project that they can collaborate on and work together to come out with a product. So, so how long are, do you get to see the students and how often? I see them about once a week. And it is usually for 45 minutes for each class. And I see 1,150 students. Uh -huh. <laughs> in a week. <laughs> that's, that's a lot of students. This is like a, like a Starbucks for kids. It, it kind of is like a little cafe for children with their iPads. And here, this is our... Okay, yeah, show, it, show me around. Okay, here it is. Here's the cart. It's where all the magic happens. and uh, Everything's color-coded. Everything's color-coded. It makes it easy to, for me, because I do teach so many students, and I really try to use every minute that they're in here. I know when I have them all back. Like, if I just look in the bins, I see six red ones back. I know I have all of them back before they leave. Do students have iPads in their classrooms, too, or is this... Are these the only iPads around? Um, they have different ones that they can check out, big carts like this from the Media Center that they can check out. And then most of our teachers have at least one. So there's usually one in each classroom for sure. And then we have different sets that they can check out. So this, the reason that the iPad Lab became what it is is that our students are Title I school, so they didn't all have devices at home. So I wanted them to be prepared when they got to middle school to know how to use one and how to create on it. <laughs> Terrific. OK, so uh, you're using these for storage here? Yes. Yes, storage and you know, different, with sometimes different manipulatives that I might use with the kids with certain apps. So I store them in the bins. And again, it's kind of color coded over in that area. I've got the same colored bins. Um, so yeah, so the kids sit down, they get their assignment, and then they kind of are dispersed to go where they would like to around the room. So they might want to sit in the bean bags with their friend. They might want to sit at the small table. Uh, we have our Osmo area in the back over there. So sometimes students are working with their partner using Osmo. If you've never tried it, check out Osmo. <laughs> This is one of their favorite stations. I started with one station last year in Osmo, and now I have six complete stations. So we'll just go through one. So this is Osmo Tangram. And I love Osmo because it is using the iPad, but it's also um, encouraging the children to work together. Um, sometimes they're competing against each other. Sometimes they're collaborating together. So Osmo is one of my favorite things, and now it's become the students' favorite activity. They love playing with Osmo. So basically, you've got some different levels. And I will do this one. So it shows you the picture that you're making, which for anyone that is my same age, this probably looks familiar, except for when we did it, it was on just like this colored mat. <laughs> so, so those of you not familiar with Osmo, there's, there's this little mirror reflector you get here so that the iPad can actually see what's in front of it. So you manipulate things in front of your iPad, but uh, the iPad can tell through its camera mirror what, what's placed where. It's really innovative. 
Yes. Um, they. I think my students sometimes think Osmo is a real person because <laughs> they talk to them. Hey, Osmo, do you see it? <laughs> so here we go. We're building, and Osmo gives you little hints as you're playing, kind of gives you little sounds. And then once you pass a level, it gives you a check mark, which is nice reinforcement, and you hear them, yay. And then the way that they've set up tangrams, once you get them correct, you can get into different levels. And so this one is in the castle, and it's a little bit different because it shows you the um, negative space. So it's you know kind of exciting. They love it. I had tangrams in my fifth grade classroom before, uh, before iPads, and so it couldn't tell if you were right or wrong. You just had to, to keep, keep, keep trying and, and uh, do it visually. And, and there are other apps for Osmo, too, with the letters and, and the drawing. It's pretty neat. Yeah. The little pieces fall down, and they're trying to hit the bullseye, and they're trying to figure out, you know, slides and planes and what they can use. So it's very exciting. And the words, I love words, where they are usually competing against each other to create a word. And you can make the words whatever you want them to be. So this year I actually got this idea from Tony because Tony made one with his name. Um, I made some with all of our staff names. So like the specials teachers and the office staff because um, a lot of the specials teachers, they just say, hey, computer teacher, hey, iPad lab teacher. And so I felt like they should know our names and a little bit more respectful. Um, so... We made one that had the, the faces of the teachers and then their names. And the kids loved trying to compete to spell the teachers' names. So, so a few questions. Uh, yeah. One was asking, do you do any green screen work in here? I am starting green screen this year. I'm actually working on it now. I've got my Legos all set up over there in little stacks. So it's coming. <laughs> all right. and so you said Osmo is a favorite app. Uh, uh, somebody asked, what's their favorite creation app? Um, my kids love Chatter Picks for Kids. They love where they take a picture or find a picture online, they draw the line, and then they speak into the iPad, and then that comes back out. And their favorite thing to do is to, especially with historical figures, like they'll say, I'm George Washington, and then it's their voice coming out, but it's the mouth of George Washington. That, that Chatter Picks Kids is an excellent app, and it has no in-app purchases, and it saves to the camera roll. It doesn't have any advertisements. Uh, I don't exactly know how they make money, but uh, I'm glad it's around. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a favorite. And Pick Collage. My students love Pick Collage. Um, yeah, there's, there's several that they really enjoy creating with. Anything else we should see in here? Um, no, I think that's pretty much it. Just, you know, it's a fun place to be, and the kids are very good with, um, they know how the room is set up, and so one of the rules is when they're finished, all of the iPads go back in the boxes up here, um, all of them asleep, and they have to set the room back the way it was, because it does get very disorganized while they're in here for 45 minutes, but they're really good during our cleanup time to set it back. And if they do it all correctly quickly, they get to do a go noodle. So they get excited about that. Nice. <laughs> well, this has to be a, a room that they love to come and visit. You know, I, you introduced me to the art teacher next door, and I know kids love coming to art and uh, it, because it's so hands-on and they get to make something. And that sounds like what your room is like, too. Yes, we are definitely trying to focus more instead of playing games on the iPad because I don't think they really need a teacher for that. It's more of creating items on the iPads. And a room without desks is pretty refreshing. Yes, and it's funny because they do tend, though, we have just a few tables, and they do tend to sit there even though they have the entire carpet that they can lay down on. It's kind of funny to see who picks what. <laughs> a question's asked, how do you keep the iPads updated? Um, actually, that is something that I have a wonderful person in the county who comes and helps me update all of them, and we do one mass update. So, like right now, the new iOS um, 9, I don't have iOS 9 yet, so I will get it in probably a month or so. so. What about putting on apps? Are you able to do that yourself, or do you have to, like... Do, do them in a big batch? Yeah, she prefers, like, kind of when I first started, I made a list of ones that I wanted for sure. And then we put all those on in a big batch. And then as the year goes on, if there is something that I find, I usually put it on my personal iPad first to test it to make sure I really love it. And then I will go and add it to one iPad, and it will duplicate itself as it moves along. <laughs> oh, and uh, there's somebody does this for 450 of their own devices. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> I bet she wishes she had uh, someone from the county to, to help out that way. Uh, we call her I, Carol, very lovingly. I, Carol, comes and helps and takes care of all the big stuff that yeah, I need help with. <laughs>
So yeah, it's great. Anybody wants to come visit Woodstock Elementary, the iPad Lab, the door's always open. It's a, it's a very friendly school. Flip around since Kristen hasn't been able to see your hearts, but they've been giving you a lot <laughs> of hearts. Hey, thanks for the hearts. <laughs> and I met you at GAETC, the Georgia Ed Tech Conference, which is which still really starts today with workshops yeah. and goes on the rest of the week. So I will see you a yes. few more times this week. Right? I hope so. Hopefully. I was glad you invited me to your school to, to check out your lab. And um, oh, look at all those hearts. That's Yay, so nice of them. Thanks for they, the hearts. They really like the space and the, they like the organization. Um, that's, I, I love classroom routines where it can keep things nice and neat and students just know what to do when yes. and everything flows smoothly. I love that. Yeah, we really, we do. We focus very much on having a routine and we kind of keep the same routine every time. If they pull out a chair and move it or move a beanbag or a stool, they always put that back. So it's really nice. It's nice that I'm not the one constantly cleaning up after them because like I said, 1,150 kids is a lot of students, but they are very good and very respectful. And I have to give a shout out because a lot of this furniture was donated. Um, mm -hmm. Brain Pop actually donated a lot of this. So um, the kids at the beginning were very aware that if the furniture was messed up, we would not have it any longer. So they're very good about keeping it nice. <laughs> uh, that's terrific. All right. Well, thanks for joining us. Thanks for your questions. And there's lots of encouragement and that people yes. like what they're and seeing. If you would like to follow me on Twitter, I do post different um, items that my students make and different things if you want some ideas. So it's just at Kristen Brooks 77. Yeah. And if you click on her Twitter profile, you can go to the page that she's made for the iPad lab. Uh, I stalked your at lab a little bit. So I see the stuff there. There's some videos and projects and, and lots of great stuff there. So, and I put her uh, Twitter name in the title of this broadcast too. So people so can good. click on that. So I try. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks for uh, joining us and I'll see you later.